Monday, June 26th, and I really missed a good move here on VRX in the chat room that I belong to. Someone alerted it um, back down here, and I noticed it was consolidating around the half dollar mark, so I thought, okay, I'm going to get in at 1651, uh, set my stop at 1643 which would have got me in and then you'll see this candle here only went down to 1644 so I would have been in and then I could have made 60 cents here up to this move so really kicking myself so 150 shares is all I would have been able to get but you can see I had it all set up over here I was going to get in I had it set at 1651 I ticked it down one but um, and then I had my stop loss already set so I could throw that in as soon as it executed. Now it had a really good move on the five minute so I'm expecting a pretty sizable pullback here. So I would think this will come back down to around maybe 1675 maybe even a little further back down to VWAP. So but anyway um, I just wanted to kind of show you you know the power of charting and to trust the charts. You could have gotten in here actually a couple of different places. I was watching this pre-market and you see I had marked this 1636 area. So you could have gotten in as soon as it broke over and retested. You know, 16, it would have been around 1640-ish. That's a great move. I mean, 75 cents, that's a huge return on a position. I don't care what size it is. Or like I said, I was watching it consolidate here and I could have scored another 50 to 60 cents. So this will probably pull back. I'm a little afraid to get in now because it is so overextended. Um, and if you look, I mean, in the, in the past week, it's had a really big move. So check out the daily right here. Uh, I throw the Bollinger Bands on there just to kind of get a feel for if it's overextended or, you know, just kind of what the sentiment is. And you can see this thing rode that upper Bollinger Band got outside the two standard deviations and it continues so I'm expecting a red day before too long but you know this coupled with the fact that you had this prior resistance level here at 1714 and you know lo and behold that's exactly where it got up to and now it's probably going to turn around like I said we're looking at what is it at 1680 now so I would expect the pullback at least down to 1675 maybe further um, this did make a pretty strong move this morning, so there could be a lot of profit taking here. Also, it's probably shortable on every platform, so, so you know the bears are going to get in because it's been so overextended. So this thing could just make a huge reversal. If you guys are kind of in the same boat I am, where you're not you're not sure if the play you're making is the right play, then take a small position, but take the position, right? I just missed out on. A significant amount of money because I was too afraid to take the position. So you can't lose the money that you don't put in, but you're never going to make any money either. So see right here, this is probably a good spot to actually get in if you're looking to play the pullback. At any rate, like I said, I'm not getting in at this point because it's already it's already made the big move for the day, I think. So that's it for today. Thanks. All right. What is going on, guys? Market is closed. I wanted to go over VRX again because I made a couple of paper trades on it. So we talked about how I missed the move earlier. And I want to, I'm going to, I know the screen looks kind of busy. I want to show you guys how accurate Fibonacci retracements can be. So if you're not familiar with them, all you need to do is look up golden ratio, uh, Fibonacci stock trading, Fibonacci extension, Fibonacci retracement. There's a lot of reading out there, but the gist of it is there are certain patterns that repeat themselves in nature, in numbers, right? So the Fibonacci sequence has to do with, I'm not going to go through all of it, but um, basically, you take percentages based off of numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, and you can use those as kind of entry and exit points. So I missed this move, right? So the first thing I did was to draw a retracement and see how far did this move go and where, where can I expect it to retrace back to. 
So that was this sequence right here that I drew. So you see it went from the low of this candle and then I just ran it up to the high which matches with this candle. And before it made this move, you'll see it pulled back down to 1675 area. Now that is just above the 618 retracement level, which in my experience shows that, hey, the stock should move higher, right? So I thought, okay, this thing could make another move. It then, it did push up and it got a little more money. I didn't get in here. I'm, I'm just showing this for demonstration purposes. So this, this would have been part of that first move that it made. And I probably would have, again, paper trading, I would have gotten out, you know, when this candle started coming back down, but, but did push up a little higher and then it started giving back. So what I do then is I run another retracement to that high. And that's this one over here. And then you'll see it did make a pretty significant pullback. So it came down to almost the 382 level. Now that's a pretty strong pullback. At that point, I would not be sure if it was going to make another move, okay? But I was watching it, and it started to form this ascending triangle right here. And I know I've got jazz all over. So it started forming this ascending triangle, and it seemed to be having a little bit of resistance. So I thought, okay, if it gets through this, and then if it gets up through VWAP, I'm going to get in. So I set up, I set up a conditional order at 1687 which is just I mean two cents over VWAP right so you'll see right here I got filled on this candle and I do this like it was live money so I would have had enough uh, buying power to get 150 shares so I've got in at 1687 and then it pulled back a little bit and then the move happened so this is ideal right you want to get in before the move actually happens if you can at that point, my target was just to get up to around the 1730 level, maybe see if it would get through this previous high. I just kind of watched it, right? So it moved. It started making this, this move back down on this candle right here. Sorry, let me blow this up. So it started making this move back down, and I went ahead and sold half my position at that point, which it actually came off at 1716. So I think it made around 20, 20 bucks, something like that, 25 bucks maybe. Um, basically, it paid for the trade and gave me a couple of, couple of dollars more at that point. Then I watched it go up, and I was kind of, you know, I'm working while I'm doing this, so I'm kind of just half watching it, and I thought, okay, yeah, it's going up. Well, what I didn't really take note of, this is typically going to be your profit target, right, the 1.272 retracement level. So I should have taken, I, I, honestly, I probably should have taken it off the table at that point, and just gotten out of the rest, the rest of the position, I think it would have netted me about 80 bucks. But uh, it kind of rolled over, and I wasn't really watching it that well. I had my stop set. Under the 50% move on this little move that it made, because... This is pretty powerful and it's pretty quick, so you you should expect some sort of snap back from this. So I I set the stop on the rest of the shares below the 50% retracement level. So I think it was 1707, 1708. Yeah, 1707, right? Was where I set my stop then. So I because I really wanted to see. Okay, I thought, hey, if it made a big move, if it gives back half, maybe it'll push higher again. And because it's paper, I left the trade on. Otherwise, I probably, when I started seeing these candles, I probably would have taken the play off the table, cashed out. In retrospect, obviously, I should have done that because you see what's going on here with the chart, right? So it, it did, it pulled back, it flagged a little bit, pulled back again, it made one more attempt, and then it rolled over the rest of the way. Down to VWAP, didn't really bounce, it held VWAP, but I mean, this is not really a bounce, right? You would expect to see a bounce and then a move higher if it was going to be a bounce. So just kind of held at VWAP there. So I, because it's paper, I thought, well, you know what? Let me short this thing. I kind of like, I was looking to see this level break and I thought, let me short it. And if it gets down through VWAP, which also happened to be, you know, below 17 bucks, then maybe we'll see it dump. Uh, it didn't, and it ended up stopping me out. No big deal. I probably wouldn't have made that play 
if it was real money. But what I also noticed is if I would have just taken this trend line instead, right? So I kind of put this trend line on thinking about that play. This is kind of indicative of a reversal move. So you see it's peaking, it's peaking, it's peaking. It's really overextended on the day, right? It ran up from 16 bucks all the way to 1740. So huge move. This is kind of that uh, reversal type move that you look for. So if you're quick, not even quick, if you're, if you're savvy and you see this, you can short it once, it's, once it rejects this point. And if I would have been smart and shorted around 1740, it takes all the way back down to VWAP. That's another 45 cents. So not only could I have made the 60 cents that I would have taken here, and then the 60 cents, right, what I got in here, uh, the 60 cents here, I could have made another 40. So that's a buck 60, roughly, on 150 shares. So that's what, like $250 somewhere around there? That's a lot of, that's a lot of cash for one ticker in one day, only using 150 shares of size. So I said, I tried that short there, it kind of got stuffed, and then you'll see it crosses over the trend line here, and that's when it would, the party's over. You don't even wanna play trying to short anymore. So even if I had just waited for that trend to break and start to move up, I could have gotten long at 17. And then it made a couple of moves here, another 15 cents. Could have made a few more bucks. I don't really trade this many times during the day, but I just wanted to show you guys how the FIB ratios can actually be of good help and confirmation on your trades. So check them out, play around with them. This is TradingView, which is a free charting website. You can sign up, you can put, I don't know, a handful of indicators on there. It's enough for me that I can watch it during the day, just one chart, but I like to just take the retracement tool and then I'll make, I'll mark what at the time would be the high of the, of the morning move and then just take it down to the low and it'll give you the levels and you can customize these. You can put in all kinds of levels. You can put in whatever, you know, you want to put in specific ratios whatever floats your boat, right? You can customize this thing. Now, 50% is not actually part of the Fibonacci sequence. I like to keep it in there because if you've watched some of my other videos where I've made this comment, a lot of times stock will retrace a move halfway. So I like to kind of have that as just a reference. But um, so like I said, it made this move here and then you just kind of watch and say, okay, you know, where's it going to pull back to? Did it pull exactly back to the 618 area? No, but it got pretty close. And sometimes it, it will literally, to the penny, touch these levels. So I, I believe in these ratios and I believe it's a helpful tool to use. A lot of people don't. A lot of people think it's crap. Check it out for yourself. Formate your own opinion about it. See what you think. This was VRX and could have been very lucrative with not a whole lot of risk. It doesn't show my stop loss on here. I think I might have had it at 1679 just below kind of this breakout zone right so this is 1680 where we're having this resistance so i would have had it at 1679 so that's only eight cents of risk which is great i mean i would have needed to get 24 cents to make this a three to one trade so get in at 87 need to be out at 1711 that's well under the cap that you know i was looking for to kind of make that move through so a lot of people will, will play a breakout if you're looking for this breakout to be where you're going to make your money, you miss the move. This is kind of that, that cup, and then here's your handle, but it didn't, it didn't bounce up again, right? The handle is usually a little pullback, and then it retests that same high and pops off. That's why I put my stop down below the midpoint of this move right here on this side of the cup. Because if it did do a cup and handle, you would expect it to go even higher then. And sometimes you'll see a stock do that. They'll make incredible moves in a day. This was a huge move. This made a point and a half. So I don't know if it was news per se. The chat room that I belong to, somebody alerted it. And that's what kind of brought me back to it. You know, I watched it pre-market. It didn't really do much. So it turns out it should have been should have been the stock that I was paying attention to. Anyway, this has been long enough. I will see you guys in the next one. Hope your day was green.